From one package, there is another package. <laughs> that game today is a hot one. Grindstormer. How are you feeling? You got John Riggs here. A little something called Open Cart Surgery. Now, I have to say up front, I don't have a clue what I'm doing, but I don't have a clue what I've been doing for the last four or five years when I've been doing this uh, series here. Um, I don't do it as often as I used to. Uh, because for the most part, it's just cleaning it, right? And that's hopefully all you have to do. Grindstormer, Tengen, Sega Genesis has a knack of the board faltering, has a knack of the board failing. But here's hoping we can pop it in, it'll work. Here's hoping, right? Because Grindstormer is a great game for the Sega Genesis, and we gotta get this game working. So that's what we're uh, that's what we're trying for today. I've done this before. I've actually got this game working before on a previous video, on a previous open cart surgery video. I had um, a replacement cart and everything like that. Here's hoping we don't have to do too much to get this game work again. Um, I'm using my Super Retro Trio 3 Plus. And if I can pop it in, I can hit power on. And if it works up front, that's even better. It doesn't. It doesn't. We'll try a few things. We can open it up immediately. Let's do that. We have our, we did, here it is. Right one, right one. Most Nintendo games use a 3.8 millimeter star bit, security bit, game bit, call it whatever you want. I don't wanna lose this screw here. But for Genesis games, for the most part, they use a 4.5 millimeter. But if you just search for game bit, like Genesis game bit or something like that, you'll find it. Genesis games also use like Phillips screwdrivers, uh, Torx bits. There's a lot going on with the uh, Genesis game. It's not quite as uniform as you'd hope. Here's the Genesis game. That's all it is. That's all it is. One big old ROM right in the middle there. And a couple little dealios on the side there. Capacitor, resistor. As always, let's try cleaning it. I mean, that's usually the best thing for it. For my 1UP card. Ding -ding. I think these work great. And 1UP cards... Um, I, I got these made a couple years ago like to use as business cards. And now 1UP card has the has the ability to make you your own one-up cards as business cards if you want. So I thought that was kind of neat. So you can actually use the one-up cards without having to open up the cart. That's the best part about it. Here's hoping. I have a feeling because it's Grindstormer. I might just have to replace everything and just put in a new board. Now if that's the case, then I'm going to have to find a board that's compatible. I have blank boards, but again, I don't even know if I can find my... Um, I, I could probably find something here. I might be able to find... Well... You know, let's see what we can find. Yeah, super prepared as always. Mm hmm Nothing. That's when we have something called Bright Boy. It's a metal polisher, is what Bright Boy says. Looks like that. A little like Brasso, it doesn't leave the residue. And I've never had a game not work because of this. Yeah, Brass Brasso's the bad. And this, as much as I hype it up, I'm, on, I'm also wondering about long-term effects. But it's also like, well, if the game's not working, I mean, and you clean it with a 1-Up card. And I have done many games where I've cleaned it with a 1-Up card and it didn't work, and I used Bright Boy, and then it worked. Because, it, I mean, I already cleaned it, and look how dirty that is. The idea being, it's picking up probably, like, a very trace amount of the um, little things on top. Those little, not the, that little, you know, it's polishing it. Think of it, I think it's a little bit like resurfacing a disc, where it just removes the smallest layer. But, I mean, how many small layers can we remove till it just doesn't work at all? So to consider anyway, right? So here's hoping. Come on, buddy. Come on, man. Let's find out. I'll put it straight back in. You can do that, by the way. I mean, you can just put it straight into the pins, just like that. Please, lay, well, I got a different color out of it. <laughs> Putting me to work, are you? If you're newer to the channel and new to open cart surgery, I want to introduce you to a friend that I've known for many years. It's been a long time since this guy's made a cameo on this channel. It is a desoldering gun. This is the FR300, I think. Uh, FR301, sorry, this is the uh, from Hako. Uh, again, linked in the Amazon affiliate if you're curious in your own. You don't have to use this one. This one's a, it's kind of the standard, I think, for, um, you know, you're not overpaying, but you're certainly not paying for like one of the cheaper things where you have to like melt the soccer and then like the, the, the little vacuum suction thingy. This one, pinhole right there, pull the trigger. <laughs> The solder sucks up into the chamber. You can dump that out later. If you do a lot of tinkering and stuff, 100% recommended. If you do every once in a while, then maybe not as much, you know? Or if you do it every once in a while, 
do those projects, get paid for those because your time is worth it, and then use that money to upgrade to something like this. Time is money, my friend. And this thing is money. <laughs> First thing we're gonna do, um, unsolder or desolder the ROM off of the original circuit board so we can put that ROM onto a new circuit board. Um, it just takes, you know, just sucking up the pins and then popping it out and we'll pop it on the other one. Do that right quick. So we just have to solder these in place. There's a little bulb there. I was using this for another project earlier, but I can remove that, put it where it needs to go. It's just letting you know how big the game's ROM is, uh, depending on what game you're making on this. And if you've never used a soldering iron before, it's okay. I mean, it's it's easy to it, easy to pick up in practice, and I know it's scary at first and stuff like that. It's a super hot tip. It is, of course it is. You know, I burn myself, I burn the table, I burn the seat that I'm sitting on right now. These things happen. Um, just be safe. That's all I gotta do. Not the vote of confidence you wanted to hear, but it's fine. You know, it's funny, a buddy of mine, Matt, actually gifted me some great soldering tools to help me, you know, doing stuff like this too, and I, I have those uh, in, in the closet too, and, and they're and they're great, and I've used them in the past. But for some reason, just I just prefer you know the old fashioned. <laughs> if we're going old school on this one, using it with the tools that I just got laying around. Except for I also always have a soldering iron laying around. I usually like to do the corners first, like a southeast and a northwest, or northwest and southeast. That'll kind of help the ROM from slipping around I'm trying to pop out when I shouldn't have to pop out, you know what I mean? The legs on this ROM are super short so they're barely coming up through the uh, through the holes here. The holes have a little metal ring and the solder tells it to go to that metal ring which will send a signal to the teeth of the board. I don't know if that's the proper term. I doubt it is. <sighs> okay, let me bring you up to speed here. Hello, speed. Clean the old tip there. And here we have, so you can see it's all nice and shiny. That little spot there says it's a, a one meg or a four meg, eight meg, that should be okay there. And then um, and all the little spots are all in place. And this, make sure it's going the right direction, which it is, is good. Um, these boards are specifically made so they don't need capacitors and uh, resistors and stuff like that too. Um, I've never had a game uh, fail because of it. So that's actually uh, pretty cool. I have a few of them left over too. I actually don't make Genesis repros anymore, um, but I have a ton of parts left over. And I was just like, I don't know if I should just give it away or donate it or, if I find someone who wants to buy it, great, or trade for it or something like that, I don't know. So if you still, if you make Genesis repros and you're just like, I could use those boards, I could use the um, the M27C, I think it's like the 322s. I have a bunch of those laying around and I'm probably not going to use them. Um, but I still like to have them just in case for things like this. So here's hoping, right? All right, Grindstormer. Again, one of, the, one of the greatest here, one of the greatest. Again, like I said, I'm just putting it straight into the thing. Please work. If this doesn't work, dude, I'll send you your stuff back. I mean, I, I, you already sent over a self-addressed stamp, you know, envelope and all that too. And I don't, I don't mind that. I can always do that, but oh, wrong one. Come on, come on, come on. Oh yeah, buddy. Yeah, dude. So there you go. Look at that. I've done so many more open card surgery videos in the past. Make sure you check those out. Thank you for watching and subscribe for more. Any of the tools I used, my Amazon affiliate link in the description. And we'll play some Grindstormer on the way out. Such a great game. You pull it back and now you can shoot. Uh, I, that's what I like. <laughs>